Mr. Investalot, welcome back to the channel, baby. Today we're going to be talking about bio-nanogenomics. There's been considerable movement on the way down and on the way up in stock price. There were some questions regarding uh, CPT codes that were withdrawn for optical genome mapping, and now that's been cleared up. We will be taking a brief look as well at the quarter one 2023 results with regards to revenue, with regards to flow cells, how bio-nanogenomics is doing. We'll also go back in time year over year to compare revenues and compare how they've been doing. But before we begin, please hit the like hit the subscribe drop me some comments down below and please remember none of this is financial advice it's for entertainment only now after announcing that there could be a possible reverse split which is more than likely i believe there's a reverse split on the cards and they need to raise capital so they've got around about three to four quarters worth of cash runway left and in order to survive what it looks like it's going to happen is they're going to reverse split and then they're going to sell sh shares via the atm facility that they have so as you can see we were still within the one dollar range we were one dollar sixteen one dollar eight something like that as soon as that announcement came stock price steadily dropped significantly and it dropped all the way down to 64 cents on one of the days yesterday they released this news it's uh, unaudited at the moment bio nanogenomics released this kind of preliminary early results for quarter one of 2023 and gave some business updates as well so these are the some of the highlights in that first quarter of 2023 they said that they expect the range of revenue to be between 7.3 million dollars to 7.5 million dollars this is an estimated increase of 28 or 32 percent if you compare it to the first quarter of 2022 in terms of sapphire systems they installed 19 systems in that first quarter of 2023 to bring up to 259 sapphire systems in total what was most impressive was the flow cell usage now with some of the flow cells if we take a look here in the first quarter of 2022 so a year ago today or a year ago to the quarter 3225 flow cells were used however there's a 62 percent increase in this first quarter of 2023 with 5226 flow cells sold now why is this a good sign and what can we gather from this kind of information well if we're selling more flow cells it reaffirms that customers are utilizing the machine and they're finding it useful more flow cells sold means the customers are using sapphire systems more so now if we compare this if we're to see this scale up over time if we're selling 5226 flow cells if it continually snowballs and it starts to gather momentum and it grows into 10k flow cells per quarter 20k flow cells per quarter we could possibly see this scale up nicely over time so now let's go back to these revenues so first quarter 2023 the most recent update 7.3 to 7.5 million dollars let's go back a year so if we look at q1 2022 let's take a look there revenue was around about 5.7 million dollars compared to the 7.5 million dollars that we see for 2023 now and we've got 3225 cells that were sold in that first quarter of 2022 now let's go to 2021 the total revenue is $3.2 million. So you can see it scaled up significantly year over year for that first quarter. And if we go back a year before that as well, if we look at 2020, it was $1.1 million in revenue. So although we were expecting this to be a lot faster and we still do, we really want this, you know, to really scale up because in terms of cash burn, we're burning a lot of cash. We need the revenues to actually start to snowball and to grow. One of the problems that we were facing as well was news regarding these CPT codes that were withdrawn. So these were codes for tier one optical genome mapping, constitutional genome wide analysis, and optical genome mapping for blood cancers. Both of those codes were withdrawn. In the most recent press release, they stated that they withdrew the applications ahead of the 2023 meeting for May for the CPT editorial panel. And these were like codes one, CPT codes, category one codes. And they said the reason why is because they're looking Looking to mitigate potentially being assigned free CPT codes, so code free. So these category uh, free CPT codes which can be assigned if a technology is considered to be emerging are not assigned pricing under Medicare's clinical laboratory fee schedule and reimbursement. So this would primarily be at the payer's discretion. Will this affect the adoption and the uptake of Sapphire systems? PT codes are defined as the current procedural terminology codes that offer doctors and healthcare professionals a uniform language for coding medical services and procedures to streamline reporting to increase accuracy and efficiency. If anybody in the comment section would like to drop some knowledge as well, if they're specializing in CPT codes, I'd love to hear, I'd love to be able to research and understand the reason why they would drop it and they'd go for these category threes. Could it be because there's not enough data for optical genome mapping yet? Even though there's thousands of publications, what's the reason as to why BioNanogenomics thinks that, you know, category uh, one CPT codes uh, would not be necessary in comparison to category three now? BioNano has said that they believe that uh, the strategy 
has changed. And they said that customer-driven reimbursement strategies may lead to optical genome mapping specific CPT codes in the future. So pre-market today, let's see and refresh what the stock price action is going to be looking like. It's looking as if we're going to have a green day, but we're not sure yet. It might just be, you know, a bull trap or we might be on for a short squeeze. Let me know what you think. So it's been heavily shorted by Nanogenomics ever since the announcement that it, there's perhaps, you know, reverse split and potential dilution on the cards. And with such a heavy shorting comes the chance that it could always short squeeze. But still fundamentally, if it short squeezes, if it gets to a good price, then they could ATM facility it uh, that way. Like back in August last year, they were using their at the market uh, facility to raise capital. So they were selling shares at the market price. So when it hit like $4.20, $4 in August, Bionanogenomics raised some capital that way. If we could see a large short squeeze, perhaps they wouldn't need to reverse split and they could raise some capital that way if we get a large enough um, short squeeze and if the stock price continues to stay high. But at this moment in time, it being under a dollar, it's looking likely that they'll reverse split and then they'll also um, start to dilute shareholders ATM facility once they raise the share price. Analysts, however, like Larry Raymer, believes that big investors are back and the short thesis has been greatly undermined, if not completely dispelled. Will almost definitely be much higher than this in four to six months. The company did a really good job of explaining the reimbursement issue. So I would love to also show you an update here. Optical genome mapping was used uh, for these two reciprocal syndromic disorders. So they took a look at Williams, Buren syndrome and also 7q1123 duplication syndrome where they utilized fish whole genome sequencing and optical genome mapping a nanogenomic sapphire system was utilized here side illumina for whole genome sequencing they acknowledged the help of josephine cater for the assistance with optical genome mapping josephine cater um, comes from Human Genetics, Hanover Medical School, Hanover, Germany, where they have been exploring uh, historically looking at leukemia using optical genome mapping. In Germany, they believe, this is the Federal Ministry of Health in Germany, that genomic medicine can save lives. We're collecting a lot of data and they stated that it opens a lot of new possibilities for genomic medicine. So in Germany at the moment, the focus is on cancer and so-called rare diseases. Bionanogenomics was also utilized in the South China tiger genome. Just recently released here in April 3rd, 2023 optical genome mapping was utilized in acute myeloid leukemia a multi-center evaluation on the optical genome mapping is not only equivalent to the standard of care technologies that they're using at the moment in the real world setting but in 13 percent of cases it was better than the standard of care technologies currently utilized they also believe that optical genome mapping can uncover findings that would alter the recommended clinical care or rendered cases eligible for clinical trials so it identified additional clinically significant structural variants or copy number variants in 13% of cases. Found that 8% of the cases, optical genome mapping found additional genomic events that helps those cases and makes them eligible for enrollment at clinical trials. They stated that optical genome mapping has a short turnaround time requiring approximately 9 hours for DNA isolation and library prep, 2 hours of hands-on time and 24 hours for automated data collection. Average cost at the moment is $500 per sample, so the average cost of optical genome mapping per sample, $500, which which makes this technology comparable to karyotyping alone, cheaper than fish panels or CMA, and significantly cheaper than whole genome sequencing and whole exome sequencing. So labeled the limitations of optical genome mapping. So they said these are some drawbacks. So first of all, it needs this high molecular weight DNA for optical genome mapping, isolated using specialized kits. They also stated that optical genome mapping is not sequencing based assay, and it cannot identify single nucleotide variants. Also currently fails to detect structural variants located exclusively in centromeric or telomeric regions which can affect treatment cases and treatment decisions but soon it will be fixed with the introduction of routine OGM coverage of greater than a thousand X because currently in this study they use 300 X and it does not routinely detect variants present at five percent or less. Finally they said the throughput of OGM is an issue because it's relatively low which makes implementation in a high volume laboratory challenging. So they're working on this at the moment and they've made some collaborations and partnerships and I'll show you a presentation soon which is really interesting that I've just seen. They said, however, since the beginning of this study, the current study that they were doing, throughput has quadrupled and it's going to get a lot better as well soon. Currently, the optical genome mapping workflow represents a significant reduction in time and costs for clinical AML workup. And because optical genome mapping analytics are automated, standardized care across different testing laboratories can be achieved and that will effectively minimize healthcare disparities. So, 
Yet again, another study, optical genome mapping has the potential to be the standard of care methodology for cytogenomic evaluation of patients with AML. Closing statement, this technology can readily be accommodated in countries that are lacking specialized cytogenetic technologists with limited resources and thereby expands the possibility of providing uniform diagnostic care and performance across the globe. There's a lot of studies, a lot of data that's coming out all the time about bionanogenomics and the Sapphire system, optical genome mapping, and they're finding, you know, it very useful in particular for blood cancers. So if they target that first, that's probably where, that and the laboratories, that's probably where they'll be able to get a lot of flow cells sold if they're able to get these reimbursement codes as well. So thank you very much for watching. In the next video, I'm gonna show you an interesting uh, video with a collaborative partner of bionanogenomics. Got some great videos are lined up so make sure you hit the like hit the subscribe drop me some comments on this video your thoughts and feelings on bionanogenomics as well please also remember none of this is financial advice it's for entertainment only and i'm gonna catch you in the next video mr investor lot over and out baby